Hey, all Cinephile Mike, your friendly neighborhood. Cinephile is here, and it is day 27. Oscar Rewind 2024 edition, my bi-weekly series of videos where I revisit the films that reflect the work of this past year's Oscar nominees and winners. Look, my hope, very simple. You rediscover an old favorite or maybe discover something brand new that you haven't seen. I'll be discussing the awards history of the film, the box office information, ratings, reviews, summaries, and everything will always be spoiler free. <laughs> ah, but... Getting into today's films, we're going to go back in time, and I am discussing A24's Ginger and Rosa. Co-written by Walter Donahue and the film's director Sally Potter, this drama was released in the fall of 2012 in the UK before debuting in the States in the spring of 2013. In all, but the end of the in all by the end of the film's run, According to Box Office Mojo, the film picked up $1,012,973 domestically and $661,803 internationally for a worldwide total of $1,674,776. According to the critics, both certified and audience, the film on Rotten Tomatoes has a divide with a critical rating of 78% based on 113 reviews and a 50% audience score based on over 5,000 ratings. Why is Ginger and Rosa here? Well, several reasons. First of all, and one of the more interesting little factoids, well, I'll share my, my true film aficionados, Ginger and Rosa was actually one of the very first films that was distributed by A24 in its fledgling year. And in the last 10, 12 years, as we know, A24 has become the powerhouse company that has given us Oscar nominees and winners such as Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Whale, After Sun, and Minari. And this past year, as a production company, had seven nominations, and it won two, both of which went to the zone of interest for sound and international feature, along with several other nods for zone of interest and two other nominations for Best Picture and Best Original Screenplay for Past Lives. Now, when they launched in 2013, in addition to Ginger and Rosa, they also released Spring Breakers, The Bling Ring, and The Spectacular Now. In addition, Ginger and Rosa features a supporting performance from one of this year's Best Actress nominees, Annette Benning. Also, cinematography nominee Robbie Ryan, who was nominated this year for Poor Things, served that role on this film. I talked a little bit about him earlier this season when I discussed Philomena. And finally, the costumes were designed by Hannah Waddington who, if that name rings familiar, she received her first nomination and win for the costumes on Poor Things this year. Ten years after her very first costume design credit, which was for Ginger and Rosa. Now, for this film's awards season journey, it was a bit small. Of the awards I have discussed, the British Independent Film Awards recognized this film the most with three nominations. Lead Actress for Elle Fanning, Supporting Actress for Alice Englert in her first feature film role, and Ryan for his cinematography. Of other notable recognition, Fanning was nominated for Best Young Actor or Actress at the Critics' Choice Awards, and Potter was nominated for Best Film at the London Film Festival, amongst other film festivals. So lots to unpack there. Lots of this year's nominees and winners working on this little film. Which opens in London, 1945, when we see two women, Natalie, played by Christina Hendricks, and Anushka, played by Jody May, giving birth simultaneously to their daughters, Ginger and Rosa. In a quick montage, we see that growing up, one lives a happy life with her mother and father, but the other grows up with just her mother as we see in said montage, the parents separate. Now we jump to 1962. Ginger, played by Fanning, and Rosa, played by Englert, are now about 17 and nothing can tear this friendship apart. As they have grown, they seek validation in each other and influence one another in both good and some other maybe not so great ways. <laughs> Underscoring this coming of age tale is the time frame which also includes the Cuban Missile Crisis. Ginger, a little bit more of a compassionate girl, believes they need to do all they can to protest and fight the need for nuclear warfare. She even falls in it with a group of older activists played lovingly by a little underused Benning, Oliver Platt, and Timothy Spall. Meanwhile, Rosa, 
supportive leads more into the feelings that the church gives her in regards to the situation that is brewing underneath everything. And it is these differences that cause a rift in the relationship between the two inseparable friends. And additionally, in the minor spoiler, one of these two friends will become romantically involved with the other's father, which will cause that rift to go even deeper. <laughs> As the two move on in their new lives, separate and yet in some ways still uncomfortably together, we will see how they grow on their own and see the implications of the choices that they make, not just on what it has on them, but what it has on their families as a whole, which builds up to a rather interesting climax that is even more explosive than the missile crisis that is at the forefront of many of the minds. Now I'll end the summary there for want of spoiling too much and you will see I left out which girl is which should you decide to check out this film. I don't fully remember the trailer so the trailer may spoil some of this so if this film intrigues you don't check out the trailer just go straight to the film. It has all of the energy we expect to see out of all of the indie films that we get out of the UK, including some of the more recent entries like After Sun and Rye Lane. The standout in this, ironically, not the British actress, but it is Fanning. She goes through quite a range of emotions and how she really goes from innocent to not so much and really grounds things in quite a nice tone that I've seen her do in some other work and in some cases not. Now, on the other side, Engler, it's her first role. She's okay, a little bit stiff in presentation, but again, it provides a nice counterbalance to Fanning's energy, so it works. They have fair chemistry, so when the divide hits, you do feel it. Also, Thing the Cringe Factor is a decent, uncomfortable performance by Alessandra Nivola as the father who decides that, for whatever reason, his daughter's friend is the way to go. Despite the implications this will have on relationships with many other people. And being a woke pacifist alongside the activist trio, it adds a layer of conflict that underscores everything these two poor girls have to go through. Now, talking about the costumes, Waddington's work, it's nothing extraordinary. It captures the spirit of the time, the 60s hippie looks that the girls sport. Um, and especially some of the very dark black looks that Christina Hendricks wears. So it's understated. So it works. The film moves nicely at a pace of about 92 minutes where we do get an insight into the characters as well as not ignoring the world around them and, you know, allowing us to see how these external conflicts play a role as well. Potter crafts a unique story that doesn't make any of the characters, despite the role, the size of the role they have, feels superfluous. Even though you may say, oh, I wish I'd seen a little more. Like for me, I would have liked more of the activist trio of Betting, Platt, and Spall. They were a delight. <laughs> but, you know, even though she moves things along, she never loses the heart of what she wants to present, even if the end results are maybe slightly less than what may be desired. She also, interestingly enough, forces us to ask ourselves, in a world where lifelong friendships can fracture, is there truly a path to redemption after betrayal? You be the judge. <laughs> Ginger and Rosa, for me, is a solid three-star film that is worth the watch, especially for the journey Fanning takes you on as Ginger, and for those history fanatics who like films that address certain pockets of history, especially if you are into the anti-nuclear movements of the 1960s. Now, if you would like to watch Ginger and Rosa as of this recording and posting, it is streaming exclusively on Cinemax, or you can rent it on most other digital platforms. So, there you have it. Hope everyone is enjoying Oscar Rewind. Is there a film you're hoping to get to? Let me know in those comments. Let me know on social media. If you like what you heard here, please subscribe to the channel. Spread the word. You can follow me on all social media platforms and on Letterboxd. Happy watching, everyone, and until next time, this is Cinephile Mike saying take a break and watch something new.